Hi, my name is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to Easy Keys. This is not only a great sounding piano software instrument, but it's also a great songwriting tool. Now, this can be used in standalone mode or within your DAW, and we're going to look at it mostly within the DAW, but I want to start with standalone mode to go over some of the features of the piano and some of the aspects of setting it up that are unique to standalone mode. So to start with, when you open it in standalone mode, you need to set the audio and MIDI settings so it'll work with your audio and MIDI hardware. And we do that from the settings menu. And under audio MIDI setup, for audio device, select which device you want used. In this case, I'm using a Moto 828 Mark II, and you can set the different type of audio driver if you're on Windows. And the buffer size defaults to 128, but you can set it to smaller or larger as necessary, and it'll even give you a readout of the latency. For the output channels, when you're using a multiple output device like I am in this case, you can set which specific channels you want, and I'm using one and two, but you can select from any of the available outputs on your multiple output audio hardware. And for MIDI devices, you can select which of all the potentially multiple MIDI controllers you have hooked up to your system. In my case, I'm using an Impulse, Novation Impulse keyboard, but I have other devices hooked up as well. But for now, it's just the impulse that I'm using. So that's basic setup. And we also have metronome settings here. And this is relevant mainly for when you're using it in standalone mode like this. And you set them over here. You can choose from a variety of different sounds. I'll put it on for now. But we don't want to hear it while I'm talking, so I'll leave it off. You have a drop-down menu here to choose from a palette of different potential sounds for the downbeat and the other beats of the metronome count off and you can set the value quarter notes are default and you can set the relative volume levels for the downbeat and the other beats as well so click ok and you can toggle it on or off using the shortcut command t and that's control t on windows and the metronome settings will start and stop based on what you have configured in here and you can also stop and start it with the menu over here but it's easier to just use the keyboard shortcut so let's look at the basic architecture here. We have the sound library over here, and right now it ships with just the default grand piano, but potentially there might be other libraries that'll be add-ons available in the future from TuneTrack. For now, it's grand piano, but you select the libraries there. And the presets are interesting. They basically give you a variety of presets based on this library, plus the settings here. And we have some interesting ones, and what happens is when you choose these, you'll notice that some of these change not only the quantities or the settings of them, but also what they are. They change qualitatively. This is, for example, a detune and a hammer and a detail control, whereas over here we have it reverb and drive. Now, there's no real way to switch these between the various potential controls that are available other than through the presets. So what you can do is just switch to try out the different presets, and they'll change the parameters here. And if you find parameters that you want to work with, you can alter them. Let's say I like that, so I can save that as a preset under here, save as, and it'll go into your user presets folder. So there's some really nice presets here. Use them as starting points to call up the controls you need, and then you can customize them from there and save as. And there are some very nice esoteric sounding settings here where they get into filter and other types of variable types of controls that will really shape the sound. And some of them play with the attack and the filter cutoff. So you get some nice variety of potential sound generation just from there. Now let's move on to the pedals. I'm going to go back to a more standard type sound. And we have three pedals. Now, basically, we have a sustain pedal that's mapped to control 64, as we would expect, and it sustains all notes. When it's down, and I'm hitting my sustain pedal to do that. But we also have a soft pedal and a sostenuto pedal. And if you have multiple pedals hooked up to your controller, you can map them using the MIDI Learn. I'm going to right-click here and go to MIDI Learn, and I'm going to just reassign momentarily my pedal now that I'm using for sustain since I only have one pedal, so now it's acting as a soft pedal, and that'll, as expected, soften the notes. So you can see when it's down, it's softer. 
I'm going to use this one now, which is a sustenuto pedal. And this is found on grand pianos. Basically, it sustains only the notes that are being held down when you depress the pedal. And then the notes that you play after will be played staccato or not sustained. So you hold down some notes, press the pedal, it'll sustain those notes, but future notes won't be sustained. Let's right-click here, MIDI Learn. So now I've just learned that to act as a sustenuto pedal. So let's say I hold these notes. Push the pedal down, they're sustained. But the notes I played after are not. Let's go back and reassign this to the regular traditional sustain pedal, and you'll see that it'll sustain all notes even after I press the pedal down. And that's the traditional sustain pedal behavior we're used to. We have a dynamics section over here, and we can adjust the range of sensitivity on the keyboard. There's a minimum and maximum for velocities. 1 and 127 is wide open, of course. And we can set here the volume of the softest note. So that'll give you a range of dynamics other than just the velocity sensitivity. And you can command click here to snap it to the detente position. And if you click here, you'll get a little graph where you can adjust, again, the minimum and maximum values, and you'll see they're reflected here, but you can also interpolate within that the different type of action or response that you want from your keyboard. So you can play with the velocity sensitivities there. And you can turn the power on or off there for that, and just click there to open and close it. And we have a tuning section here. We just click, and we can transpose by octaves or by semitones or even retune by cents if you need to. But there's no real need for semitone transposition because when you're working with the songwriting tools here, there's all kinds of great key transposition features built in here, which we'll look at in later videos. So that's an introduction. One other thing I want to draw your attention to, the behavior of the knobs. You can adjust the setting under the menu over here. There's knob mode. I prefer the linear response. It defaults to circular by default, but I find this a little more what I'm used to for conventional behavior from other plugins that I'm used to using. But you can adjust the reaction of the mouse to the knob movement over here in this knob mode settings area. See you for more in the next video.